On a dark and stormy night, Princess Peach and Toad visit Mario up a mysterious envelope. Mario unfolds the envelope to find out there's another Toad that's had its color drained, leaving nothing but a lifeless sheet of paper. Mario recognizes the postage stamp on the letter and heads towards the island where it was sent from, Prism Island. Upon arriving on Prism Island, Mario notices there's a lot of color splotches on the ground and soon finds out the cause behind this. Bowser's minions are sucking the world dry through straws. Mario takes it upon himself to stop this horrible scheme and return color to the island. Color Splash's plot is very straightforward, but it is also very entertaining as the game heavily relies on comedy for its writing style and its set pieces. These kind of events throughout the game really flesh out the characters of this world and make it feel like a living place, rather than just a world to travel in to reach the end of the game. While the game heavily relies on Bowser's minions, as well as the Toads as the main NPCs of this game, their dialogue is chock full of self-aware humor and references to pop culture. This story is also engaging for the writing alone and is definitely worth the time it takes to play through the game. Speaking of playing the game, the gameplay is where the game falters a bit as the battle system it offers is very dull. Plus, it has a HORRIBLE inventory system. Mario has no skills of his own, so he must use items for his attacks and health restores. These items consist of playing cards that allow Mario to use various hammer and jump attacks. He even has access to a Fire Flower attack based on the power-up from the main series. When executing the attacks, pressing the A button at the right time will make you do additional damage. However, if you want even more power, you can fill the cards with paint from Mario's paint meter to really dish out the pain. This is where things start to fall through. From the start, you have enough space for only 99 cards, and that space fills up fast despite each card disappearing after a single use. The real problem lies on managing those cards because you have to constantly scroll through your menu to select an attack, then choose to paint the card, select it, then use the stylus to flick the card upwards. This makes battling very slow paced and often mind numbing depending on how many enemies there are. The only worthwhile reward you get from battling is receiving hammer scraps, which fills up a meter that, when full, increases the amount of paint you can hold. This is the only way to upgrade Mario throughout his adventure, as health increases are only available by beating a world's boss. Bosses in Color Splash pose a huge threat and are almost impossible unless you exploit their weaknesses. Scattered throughout the world are Thing items that Huey will turn into powerful cards. Many of them are required for boss fights as they will exploit the weaknesses of that boss and make them vulnerable. The game also does a good job at hinting at which Thing items are necessary if you talk to NPCs. If you however run out of cards in battle, you can spend 10 coins to spend a roulette wheel that gives you a random card that you've already collected. The world of Color Splash is divided into sturdy levels ranging from 45 minutes to an over an hour long. You select where you want to go in the world map in the style of classic Super Mario World, and try to complete the level's different objectives. I say objectives because each level has multiple goals to reach, leading to a different level to unlock. There is also a reward for filling in every colorless spot by hitting it with your hammer in the form of an in-game soundtrack. Though, hunting down every single spot can be very tedious and it uses a lot of paint so try to increase your paint meter as much as possible. The overworld gameplay as a whole is also very enjoyable with its wonderful level design and beautiful visual style. The paper aesthetic drives home how absolutely magnificent this game looks. All objects and landscapes are made out of paper and it looks so natural given the context of the world. The visual presentation as a whole is top notch as well, but it doesn't stop there, as the sound presentation is remarkable. The soundtrack ranges from new themes and remixes of music found in other Mario games, such as Rainbow Road 64 and the Super Mario Bros. USA main theme. The big band theme that you hear throughout the soundtrack gives the game an energetic feel and could even be relaxing at times. The presentation as a whole is the best aspect of this game and it oozes polish. Overall, Paper Mario Color Splash is quite a remarkable experience, despite some of the ideas falling flat. The sluggish battle system hinders the gameplay as a whole, despite the amount of fun I had exploring each level. It may not be the sequel to the ever-beloved Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, but I'm glad I played it regardless. And that does it for our review of Paper Mario Color Splash. To see a more detailed and fully written review, be sure to check out our website, GamingGamma.com, for the full written review. A link will be provided down in the description bar below. And also be sure to subscribe for future Let's Plays and reviews on this channel. And by all means, leave a comment down in the comment section below to know what you guys think of the review or Paper Mario in general. And as always, everyone, this is GammaLad signing off.